Welcome to the Primat 3 intro tutorial. This tutorial is going to show you the basics of Primat, how to go about using some of the new interface, and just give you a basic overview of what Primat 3 does. So let's take a look at Photoshop here. We've got our green screen image selected in the layers palette. And we're going to come up to Filter, Digital Anarchy, and select Primat. Now this is going to launch the Primat 3.0 interface. You'll notice that we're at a kind of a big resolution here, just so you can see everything, or at least see what we're doing. Uh, one of the side effects of that is that you can't see everything. So our interface is really designed for a little bit larger screen. Uh, 1024 by 768 is, is the minimum. And so we've got a few things off to the side here that aren't showing, and there's a few buttons down at the bottom that aren't showing. But for the purposes of this tutorial, that doesn't really matter. All we're really going to be worrying about is our three-step mask section over here, our selection tool, and the remove spill section down here, and also our view options and display options. So that's what we're going to cover in this tutorial. And so the fact that we've got uh, our interface a little bit cut off on the side over here and down the bottom really isn't going to affect us. So let's zoom out a little bit here so we can see our entire image. Now the first step with Primat is to select the background. And we do that by making sure that step one select is selected and we click and drag on the background. Now this sets the key color. This is the color that we're trying to get rid of from the entire image. And by default it's going to remove it from both the background and the foreground. And that's not really what we want. We really just want to remove it from the background here. And so what we need to do is tell it what's in the background and what's in the foreground. And the easiest way to do this is to go into our mask mode. And you can see our background area here, which is our semi-black area, and the foreground, which is our mostly white area. And now we're going to go in with our step two, clean background, and click and drag on these light gray areas that should be completely black. So we're going to click and drag there, click and drag here, can drag over in this corner and so that's going to make our background the green area completely black and now we want to do just the opposite with the foreground so we're going to select step 3 clean foreground clean FG and we're going to click and drag in the foreground area now one of the cool new things that we've added with Primat 3.0 is the ability to use a box selection for selecting all these pixel values. You can see that, let's zoom in a little bit here, and you can see that we've got just a little bit of gray left where her eyes are. And the easiest way to do that is to grab our box selection tool and just draw a box around them, just like that. And that selects that. Now you'll notice that we also have some gray up here in the, along our hairline. And that's not really suited to the box command. Again, that's a little bit easier to grab with our point tool. So we can also use keyboard shortcuts to change from point to box or box to point. We can click on the V key and that'll switch to the point tool. Or you can click on the B as in box key and that'll switch to box. Back to V as in Victor, which is a sharp, sharp-edged letter, sharp-edged letter V. And that gives us the point tool. So we've clicked on V and gotten the point tool. And now we're just going to run along this edge here and get these last remaining bits of gray. And so that's going to give us a pretty good mask. We can zoom on out. And now that we've got this black and white mask, we can see we've got very good white area here for the foreground subject and a very good black area for the background. We can go back to our composite mode to see how that turned out. And it turned out pretty well. 
Now there's a number of different ways that you can preview this. Now you can preview it against a background layer, which is what we're doing here. You can see comp, comp, which means composite. Composite shows layer, which is the bottommost layer in the layers palette back in Photoshop. We can also preview it against, say, a neutral color. So if you just want to see what it looks like on gray, or if you have a specific color background that you're looking to put it on, put your foreground subject in front of, you can of course change that. We can click on this to change it to any color. In this case, we're just going to leave it neutral gray. And we also added two new options. Now if you're used to Photoshop, whenever you see transparency, you usually see a checkered background. And we've added that in. So if you click on the transparency button, voila, you get a checkered background, just like you would see in Photoshop. Now this can be a very useful tool if you're trying to figure out if you've got any remaining transparency going on. Sometimes it's very difficult to see on a solid background if you have just faint transparency and there might be a little bit of that showing through, especially on a, on a gray background. But it's pretty easy to see a checkerboard and if there was any transparent areas on her face, that checkerboard would really pop right through. And so it can be a very useful tool. Now there's another option called Split, which tries to kind of give you the, the best of both worlds. And so you've got half checkerboard to see how your foreground subject look, looks against that. And you also have half the background color to see how she looks against that. So this is kind of a good combo mode. Personally, I prefer to just switch back and forth between the transparency and the show color or show layer, as the case may be, and just switch back and forth. This way you get to see the entire image with an entire checkerboard and the entire image with your background of choice. But Split does let you see it all at the same time and that can be an advantage sometimes, but I prefer just to use transparency and turn it on and off and see things like that. So that's the basics of using Primat to pull a key. Now you'll see that if we zoom in a bit, move around to her hair, we've got a little bit of a green cast along the, the edge here. And that's where our spill tools come in. So we can use our spill minus to get rid of that green. and start pulling it more towards the golden yellow that makes up the rest of her hair. And so it's a pretty good job of doing that. Now the spill tools really all work the same way as far as spill minus and spill sponge. These are your two key tools for getting rid of any green spill, any, any green that might be, or, or blue, that might be showing through her hair, might be reflecting onto her white blouse here. There's many ways that you can get spill into a foreground image. And spill minus and spill sponge are your two main ways of getting rid of it. And you can kind of look at this as spill sponge is kind of a big brush and spill minus is a small brush. If you have just a little bit of spill and you're just trying to deal with very limited amounts of spill, spill minus works really well. You just need to click and drag on the area and it'll start pulling that color contamination out of that area. Spill sponge is really useful if you have just a lot of spill. Say if we had, say if we had a massive amount of blue spill on our shoulder here, just a lot of light reflecting off of the background, spill minus would be a much better tool for trying to get rid of that. But we talk about that in a little bit more detail in other tutorials. So I'm gonna zoom back out here basically just want to touch on that just to give you an idea of how the spill tools work. And so once you've got a good key pulled, you've gotten all the spill removed from the image, you can now click OK. And this will take you back into Photoshop. You'll have transparency where the screen was. And then you can go ahead and drop in any other background that you want to have back there. So you can see in this document. We've got several different backgrounds we can choose from. We can drop her in front of 
whichever one we think she looks best in front of or whichever one she likes best and then save it out and uh, print it out. So those are the basics of Primat. I hope you uh, found this interesting and useful and definitely check out our other tutorials on digitalanarchy.com. Thanks a lot.